This video covers creating SVG elements from data. The structure of this video is as follows. SVG revisited. D3 data operator revisited. Binding data to SVG elements. Using data bound to SVG elements. Using data to style SVG elements. And the summary. All right, let's get started. SVG Revisited. SVG is a vector-based graphics system. The SVG system creates DOM objects for each graphical element. The SVG element is commonly referred to as the SVG viewport. Things within the SVG viewport's dimensions are visible. Things inside the SVG tags, though outside the viewport dimensions, are not visible. SVG comes with these basic shapes predefined so as to make it easy to draw them. Because SVG graphics are written in XML, which is very close to HTML, we can use D3 to create SVG tags and set their attributes with values. Which means we can write D3 code to simulate writing SVG code manually. We can do this with all of the basic SVG shapes. Now that we've refreshed our memory of SVG, SVG basic shapes, the SVG viewport, and how to use D3 to create SVG basic shapes, next we look at the D3 data operator revisited. D3 data operator revisited. This is the D3 data operator. We have seen it before when we gave it values to bind to the selection. The data operator joins the specified array of data with the current selection. So far, we have defined our data inside of the D3 data operator. Though when we first talked about the D3 data operator, we covered that the value passed in could be an array of data values, such as an array of numbers or objects, or even a function that returns an array of values. From now on, to make things more modular and easy to read, we will define a myData variable and then use that variable to feed the D3 data operator. For now, we will just use a single array of many numbers. Later, we will cover associative arrays, JSON, and other types of data. Next, we look at binding data to SVG elements. Binding data to SVG elements. In the video Binding Data to DOM Elements, we bound data to DOM elements. Using a new bare bones HTML file, the update selection was created. Then, the enter selection was referenced and an HTML paragraph element was appended to each JavaScript object element created to hold each of the data points. Because SVG is written in XML, we can do the same thing as we did with the paragraph element. Though instead of using the paragraph element, we use the SVG keyword for creating a circle. As you can see, we were able to bind data to five SVG circle elements. An important thing to remember is that SVG definitions must live inside of SVG tags to be able to be read and understood by the browser. Which means that instead of appending the circles to the body element selection, we have to append an SVG tag inside of which we create the SVG elements. We give the SVG tag viewport dimensions to make sure it fits inside of the screen. When we hover over the SVG tag in the Elements section of the Developer Tools, you can see the highlighted dimensions on the actual HTML document. As you can see, the circle elements still have the right data bound to them, and now they live inside of the SVG viewport. Recalling that we can add attributes to SVG basic shapes, we can give the circles some attributes. As you can see, by adding attributes to the circles, the web browser was able to draw the SVG circles for us. However, as you can also see, 
each circle receive the exact same attribute. This is because we pass to the attribute operator a constant value, which means that the constant value is given to every element in the selection. The attribute operator also behaves like most D3 operators in that it is also able to take in a function. Next, we look at using JavaScript functions to use data bound to SVG elements. Use data bound to SVG elements. Before, we covered that this operator inserts an attribute and a value, if specified, into the elements in the selection. Then it returns a selection. The examples covered used a constant as the value. What we did not cover is the case where we can pass in a function to the attribute operator, and the return value of the function is used to set the name attribute value. Let's try some simple examples to see how it works. First, we do a simple example using an HTML paragraph element. As you can see, we set the class attribute of the paragraph to be the constant value first underscore p. Next, Let's write a named function that returns a string. Then, let's insert a paragraph with a class attribute. As you can see, the my function function was applied to the paragraph element and returned the value function underscore p as the class attribute value. Next, let's write an anonymous function that returns a string and use it directly in the D3 attribute operator. As you can see, the anonymous function was applied to the paragraph element, and the return value anon underscore p was set as the class attribute value. Now, let's go back to our SVG circle example. We set the data variable, then we create the SVG viewport, then we bind the data to the circle elements, then we append the circle element. Next, instead of setting the attributes as constants, let's define a named function to set the attribute values. We define my function to return the value of 25. When evaluated, we see that the function returns the value of 25. Next, let's put it into the circle element attribute operators. As you can see, this set all of the circle element attributes we defined to 25. Recall that the D3 operators give us the data attribute of the element as the letter D, as well as the selection index number as the letter I. Now, let's write a simple named function that takes in these elements and does something with them. Next. Let's change the circle element attributes by calling the attributes again, though this time with function2 as the function we are passing in. As you can see, the function2 was applied to each element, and the D3 attribute operator provided the D and I arguments to the function. Next, let's leave the radius constant and play around with the CX and CY variables. So now we know how to use the data bound to SVG elements. Next, we look at how to use JavaScript functions to style the different SVG elements according to their bound data. Using data to style SVG elements. The style operator, if a name and value are specified, sets the CSS style property for the given selection with the given specified value. Earlier, we set the style as a constant. As you can probably imagine, we can pass a function into the style operator as well. The style operator provides us with the D for data and I for index variables. Let's try a simple example to see how it works. Going back to the SVG circle example, we set the data variable, we create the SVG viewport, we bind the data to the circle elements, then we append the circle elements. Next. Let's use anonymous functions to set the CX and CY circle attributes while leaving the radius constant.
This gives us the five circles spread out diagonally towards the bottom right of the screen. Next, let's write a function that colors the circles green or red depending on whether the index is odd or even. This function takes in the variable d and i. If i is divisible by 2 using the modulus, then we return green. If i is not divisible by 2, then we return red. We test it out, and as expected, this returns green. All right, let's style our circles. As you can see, the circles are now alternating in color. Also worth noting is that because D3 selections are zero-based arrays, the first circle is green. There are many ways to style SVG and HTML elements based on functions. D3 even provides some operators specifically for colors. We will cover that later. And with that, you can see how we can use the data bound to SVG elements to style them. The summary. This video covered SVG revisited, D3 data operator revisited, binding data to SVG elements, using data bound to SVG elements, using data to style SVG elements, and the summary.